Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ross Plamia, and if you are 3D artists who are using Corona Render or only planning to, then this guide is exactly what you need. Today we are going deep, not just what these buttons do, but a full breakdown on how to actually set up Corona Render settings the right way, like a pro. Actually, it's knowing about what matters, what doesn't, and how to get clean, beautiful results fast. So grab a tea, open your scene, and let's level up. I will take one of my latest scenes that I developed for my course, and if you want to learn how to create realistic renders with support and community, I left a link below in the description. Press F10 to open our Corona settings. And first we have to select our renderer as Corona. Here let's take a look at our general settings. Show VFB shows us frame buffer. Now let's start our interactive and now we got preview of our render. Let's stop it. Now let's take a look at our setup light mix. Here we got our options and the first one is instant lights. Let's click generate and I will show you how it works. Let's start our interactive and here in the light mix tab we've got our environment generated from light mix. For example, if I add another light source, let's create it Corona light after grid and let's draw some bulb on the wall. Now let's take a look at our reference and as you can see it's not added in our light mix. So to update it, we have to stop our interactive render, move again to our light mix setup, you can find it right here, and click generate again. Let's start our interactive, and now we got it, like this. Now let me show you the difference between instanced and grouped lights. Let's delete the previous one, now select Corona light, sphere, let's move to the higher view, create our first sphere right here, let's move it higher, like this, edit its size, now copy it by instance, this is how we got our instanced light, and now let's create another copy with the copy option, okay, and let's edit its radius like this, and let's make our spheres higher. So here is the difference between instance and grouped lights, click generate, now let's run interactive Render, move to light mix setup, and here we got our lights copied as instance, and this one as copied as a copy. So these are two separate layers. Now let's generate group lights like this. Click start interactive, and now we got each light separated. Okay, so let's clear our scene from those lights like this. Now here's the reset settings button. It's actually disable all the edits in the post and lights mode, so be careful with it. Now let's take a look at our progressive rendering limits. So the first one is pass limits, which is placed right here. Let's move to steps and start to render our image. Here we got amount of passes that has been done. Next noise limit right here. I set it as a free person. This is the usual amount, which is around 2 and 3%. And time limit. So usually I use this time limit in rendering my animations, because I have to set up amount of time to render my animations overnight. Okay, let's move next, click cancel right here and stop. Now let's save our file as a CXR, like this. Let's name it as one, save. And this 6R file saves all the information about your render. So this feature allows you to save all the post and rendering process right in your CXR file. And if you need to continue rendering this image, you can simply resume from file, press 1 right here. And if you want to resume your last render, simply press this button right here and it's actually resuming from rendering our pass number 12. So the next option is render overrides, and right here is render hidden light. Simply create our light sphere like this. Let's hide it. Now let's run our interactive 
render enable this option right here here's our light let's get rid of it in the case if you forgot to render your color mask and you don't want to render a whole image you can simply select this option right here render only mask and let's select our masking wire color option right here so it will render only these color masks great and this option material override we usually use to set up our lighting like this so let's open our corona material editor and let's drag our material right here it's standard corona render material and it allows us to set up the lights the right way in the case if you want to include or exclude some objects you can simply select this object right here and press plus button now this object has its materials i usually use it to setting up materials of the objects in order and preserve options allows you to preserve some displacement pump opacity or light slicer and glass materials like this great let's uncheck our material override box right here now let's move to the denoising this part is tricky for beginners but essential for pros i am always use corona high quality and this amount which is the best option from those ones and if you got some fireflies in your render you can use this mode but usually corona high quality is pretty enough and usually i use amount around 65 or 75 which allows me to get pretty sharp results without blurry image and same for the radius right here usually it's one so it's pretty standard settings which works great now let's unpack the most useful features of corona 12. well this production upscaling is works with corona render 12 and this is really great feature for rendering preview renders or saving your time with rendering animations and let me show you how it works for example you have your resolution right here this method is split resolution in two times and rendering it two times lower here's the result which is rendered in full resolution and in lower resolution automatically upscaled in corona you can see the amount of time which saved it's three times faster now render selected stop wasting your time for re-rendering only one chair for example you need to change only one chair in your scene in this case you don't need to render a whole image but you can only render this element right here here's how it looks like this or let's exclude it open our list press exclude and okay now our object is excluded also you can select here viewport selection which is right here let's select our carpet right here also we can select our objects by its id right here let's indicate here number five now let's move to our object of the ways object properties and object id let's indicate here five and now we got our ways rendered great now scene environment first is going to be our 3 ds max settings which is environment tab just press button 8 and you can open environment and effects tab you can upload map right here or in different case you can simply copy it in single map let's close it you can drop your map for example hdri or corona sky right here or let's close it go to single map and use it as override map right here you can choose one or multiple maps right here usually i use single map like this this overrides we usually use for example when i don't like the image of the sky so i can upload different sky or hdri map in the visibility override and also copy it into reflections and override so i will have the ambient light from one map and the pattern of my sky from the other map and in the global volume material we usually use maps like fog created by global volume material in the camera tab we've got same settings as in our frame buffer in post-production right here 
this is where you actually stop being just simple 3D artist and start becoming a visual storyteller. For example, we can change tone mapping as simple exposure, white balance and etc. It is all placed right here. And here is the simple camera settings, which you can edit right here or right in the camera. In the performance tab, we got our global illumination and here's path tracing applied which is standard parameter and if you want your image rendered the right way you should leave it as it is. This settings matters more when you're rendering animations or working with complex scenes. For secondary solver I usually use UHD catch will be the best. We didn't change any options right here. Now note that settings below are optimal so we don't have to change them either. Same goes for the UHD cage right here. But note that still frame that's right here we can use animation flicker free to prevent some kind of glitches. So usually in the work I didn't use any of these tabs because standard corona option is pretty enough. If you need some explaining on those options you can simply view them like this. Also I didn't change any options in the displacement to prevent the glitches on showing the displacement textures. In the interactive rendering I usually didn't change max passes right here. In some cases I can change NVIDIA GPU AI right here to render my interactive much faster like this. It's pretty useful on setting up the lights or checking the composition. Alright, and caustic solver we use in the case we have to create caustics on the water and etc. In the system tab I didn't change any of these options right here. And if you want to learn more on those image filter, usually I use only high quality and it's more than enough. Now in render elements tab we usually set up our masks and our environment lights etc. like this. And in the common tabs we usually set up time output for our single images or range in case of animations. Here we indicate the size of our frame and in the options I usually uncheck this box to save more memory when I've got complex and hardly to optimize scenes so it will render a little bit faster. This render output allows us to save our files automatically. Well, that was a lot, but here's the truth. You don't actually need all of those settings. You just need to understand the basic principles about it. Choose simplicity over complexity. Control only when you need it and focus on creating beautiful images. And if you want full step-by-step -step program, with support and community, where we teach you how to build beautiful and realistic images, land clients and create renders that sell, check out Plamia School, links down below. And hey, if you like this video, drop a comment with your most useful settings in Corona Render. And if this helped you, subscribe for more deeper tutorials. Keep creating with soul. Thanks for watching and see you.